On this ECG, the abnormal morphology of the QRS complexes is striking, with a right bundle branch block morphology in lead V1. On close examination, the QRS duration is above the normal range. This is a broad complex tachycardia with a right bundle branch block morphology. Importantly, the cardiac axis is deviated to the left. There is clear evidence of AV dissociation with two capture beats present during the tachycardia. Also on analysis of the rhythm strip, we can identify what we believe to be two distinct P waves. In addition, there are recurrent distortions of the ventricular deflections consistent with fusion between these deflections and dissociated P waves. There is clearly no causative relationship between atrial and ventricular depolarization, and the presence of AV dissociation implies that a VT is overwhelmingly likely to be the cause of this broad complex tachycardia. In fact, the case under consideration here is a condition termed idiopathic fascicular left ventricular tachycardia. The combination of right bundle branch block morphology and left axis deviation is characteristic of this disorder. The clinical presentation described here is typical. The term idiopathic ventricular tachycardia describes a defined group of ventricular tachycardias occurring in a structurally normal heart. This particular variety of idiopathic ventricular tachycardia is generated by a re-entrant loop formed in the interventricular septum between myocardium and elements of the conducting system. Depolarization is discharged from this loop into the diaphragmatic aspect of the septum. The left ventricle is therefore depolarized by depolarization moving upwards from this area, producing left axis deviation on the readout. As the ventricles are depolarized from the left chamber, depolarization of the right ventricle is delayed relative to the left, producing a right bundle branch block morphology on the ECG. The QRS duration in these cases is close to the normal range and may even fall within the upper limit of the normal range. Analysis of case reports in the literature suggests that reasonably obvious evidence of AV dissociation is frequently present in these cases, but it is often missed. The tachycardia may then be erroneously treated as a paroxysmal SVT in these relatively young patients. We hope that you found this case discussion helpful. If you like our videos and content, please check out our online learning platform, akadoodle.com. At akadoodle.com, we develop rich animated video courses which explain complex medical concepts. If you need credits, we are ACCME accredited and our pro subscription offers AMA PRA Category 1 credits. Sign up today.